Hey, it's Matt. I'm going to show you how you can use an Arduino, like this one, in order to program any of the ATtiny processors, like this ATtiny84 that's sitting right here. The ATtiny chips are awesome for makers. For starters, they're really small. This is the ATtiny84A, which is actually a big one. The ATtiny85 is even smaller. Now compare that to the Nano and compare that to the Arduino Uno. There's definitely a difference, but even though they're really small, they're very easy to use because you can actually use the Arduino IDE to program them just like you would any other Arduino. For example, I am going to be building a dog collar light for my dog. It's going to be so cool. It's going to have flashing LEDs. It's going to have his name custom written on the case. He is going to be putting on a show. But I need the AT Tiny because that's the only thing that's actually going to fit in here. So I need to get this thing programmed. So I'm going to show you how it's done. So one of the first things that you're going to want to make sure you've done is downloaded the Arduino IDE. So this is what it should look like roughly. If you have not done this, then go to the Arduino website, go to the download area, and make sure you download the actual Arduino IDE. There's also this web editor uh, where you can download and edit everything online. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, we want the actual Arduino IDE. Now, once you've done that, the next thing that you're gonna need to do is grab an AT Tiny core. Now, there are a bunch of these cores, but the one that I really like uh, is this one here. And I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description for this video. And what I like it is the author is seems to be actively maintaining these cores as of 2020. And there are cores for basically all the AT Tiny processors. So it's kind of your one-stop shop. Uh, it's really nicely done. And the benefit of going to this page is you also get a lot of technical information, gotchas, troubleshooting info, and so on and so forth. And one of the things that you'll find is this installation page, which is what we're going to work through to add this to our Arduino IDE. So what you actually want to do, first step, is grab this board manager installation URL. Um, so basically, Arduino allows you to add additional boards. So we grab this. And we go ahead, we go to the IDE, we go to File Preferences, we go to Additional Boards Manager URLs, and we go ahead and put that in. What I found when I was trying to figure out how to program the ATiny is I would get a lot of different information pointing me to all of these different board URLs. And a lot of them had zero context about what the heck they were, whether these were out of date or not out of date. So uh, that's why I'm kind of pointing you everywhere. So you can do this research yourself and you can verify that this is still correct information. So the next thing that we're gonna need to do is actually download these cores. So all we've done is so far is told the Arduino IDE where these cores can be found, but we gotta download and activate them. So you go to tools, you go to board, and you go to the boards manager. And what we wanna do now is now that we've added this additional board URL, uh, yep, sure enough, uh, we find the actual AT, AT tiny cores uh, available for download. And you'll notice there's actually two sets of cores. So you got um, what I guess are the older style AT Tinies, like the ones we're talking about in this video, including the AT Tiny 85, uh, AT Tiny 84, and all of the other AT Tinies that we need. Now, there are some other new AT Tinies that I'll talk about in a separate video, and you can grab those here as well. So we want AT Tiny 85, so we click Install, and it's gonna go ahead, it's gonna download all the board definitions, all that good stuff, it's gonna install it for us, and then the board should be available for our use. Okay, so now that they're installed, I can go to Tools, Board, and just verify that all the AT Tiny cores are there. You may have to do a little bit of scrolling because you might have other boards installed, but the AT Tiny uh, is right here. Now plug your Arduino into your computer. Now we get to turn our Arduino into an ISP or in-system programmer. And this is super easy to do. Just go to File, Examples, and load up the Arduino ISP example. 
And this is basically all of our work done for us. All you have to do now is just make sure that you go to tools and that you have the correct board and port selected for the Arduino. Once you've got that selected, go to sketch, upload, and it's gonna go ahead, compile that, and upload it to your Arduino. So our next task is to hook up the ATtiny to the Arduino. So right here, I have an ATtiny 84A, and I will also show you the pins for the ATtiny 85 and how to look up the pins for any other ATtiny as well. So what we wanna do is we wanna start off with the Arduino. Now, a lot of people seem to be hooking up the programming pins to the ATtiny using these output pins here. Now that will work, but if we actually look at the documentation, we find that what they're asking us to do is to hook them up to the ICSP pins. So if we go back to that Arduino ISP sketch that came in the Arduino IDE, we can see all of the programming information laid out. And there's basically six pins that we have to worry about that have to connect from the Arduino over to the ATtiny. So on the Arduino end, we can see that the ICSP or uh, SPI header is all laid out nicely for us. They actually drew uh, the header. So we can see there is the MIS open, the SCK pin, the five volt pin, the MOSI pin, and the ground pin. And then on top of that, and this kind of is easy to miss, uh, there's also pin 10 on the Arduino, which has to connect to the reset pin on the ATtiny. So how do we actually figure out which pin is which? Well, we go over to the data sheets. I strongly recommend actually looking at the data sheet for your microprocessor instead of just going off uh, whatever else you find online. And the way you do that is you go to Microchip because that's the company that actually makes these processors. And once you find the processor that you're using, like the ATtiny85, you just click View Data Sheets and they're all here. And what you want is either the summary data sheet or the complete data sheet. Both of them will give you the pin information. Summary is just a little bit easier to read. And it's the exact same thing for the ATtiny84A, or if you somehow have an ATtiny84 chip, which is the older one, then for that as well. You just click View Data Sheets and they're all there. So let's take a look. So once you open up one of these data sheets, you'll find that one of the first pieces of information they give you is the pin configurations. So let's start with ATtiny85, just because it has less pins, it's a little less confusing. So we can see here's the VCC, so that's where that voltage pin will go. Then we have SCK, so that's gonna map over to the Arduino's SCK pin. Then we've got MISO, MOSI, and we have ground. So those are all the pins that are gonna map from that ICSP header that we saw. And then we've got the reset pin over here, which is gonna map over to pin 10 on the Arduino. And with the ATtiny84, it's basically the same thing, along with any other ATtiny processor from these generations. So you can see we've got the same pins uh, just in different spots. So we've got voltage, we've got ground, uh, we have MISO, we have SCK, which here is labeled USCK. Uh, it's the same pin. Then we have MOSI, and then we have reset hiding over here on pin four. So that's exactly how I'm gonna go ahead and connect them uh, on the Arduino and on my ATtiny. Okay, I've got everything hooked up with hookup wire. Now it does look a little bit like a dog's breakfast, so let's zoom in on each component one at a time. So here's my Arduino, or really I should say Arduino clone because this is the Elegoo one, but they all work the same. So you can see most of the action is happening right here on the ICSP header. Make sure you're using the ICSP header. So I went and I hooked up everything over here instead, and I spent longer than I care to admit on video trying to figure out what the heck was going wrong. And otherwise, I just made sure to map the pins and follow that layout we saw in that Arduino ISP source file. And then of course, the one wire that's not going to ICSP is over here. That's to pin 10, that's the reset wire. Now, before this is ready to be plugged into the computer, there are a couple capacitors that we have to add. 
The first one is on the AT Tiny itself. We want a 0.1 microfarad capacitor right across the power and ground. And boom, just like that, there's our capacitor. Now, I did have to use a little bit of hookup wire here so that I could use these two close holes for the capacitor because the leads are not that long. And so this is a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, and you really should be using a ceramic capacitor. And the thing is, you can get away without this capacitor most of the time, but when you start getting weird errors and your programmer's not working right, um, you are gonna find out that missing this capacitor is what's causing all of that. Next, we need a capacitor on our Arduino as well. And we want that to be across reset and ground, and that's gonna be a 10 microfarad capacitor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this across the reset and the ground pins. Now this is what's gonna make sure that our Arduino can actually function as a programmer. Okay, that looks like everything, so let's plug this in. Ah, no smoke, that's a good sign. Okay, so the AT Tiny and Arduino are hooked up together and the Arduino in turn is hooked up to my laptop. So before we go any further, we, there's a couple settings that we have to change. So when I go to tools, first and foremost, I wanna make sure that the board is the correct version of the AT Tiny. Now, if you're using the 85, then you would have the AT Tiny 45 slash 85, or sorry, 25 slash 45 slash 85. If you're using the AT Tiny 84, you would have this one, and so on and so forth. You're not using the OptiBoot versions, you're just using the regular versions. And then once you select the chip, there's another menu here that lets you specify the exact chip you're using, like the 84, 44, 24. So you gotta set all of this correctly or all sorts of weird things will happen. Now, you also need to set the clock speed and make sure it's a clock speed that the AT Tiny you're using actually supports. So right now we're using eight megahertz, uh, which is a nice and fast speed. Uh, I think it's the fastest for AT Tiny 84. Uh, but for example, in the dog collar light that I'm gonna be building, I'm gonna bring that down slower, down to one megahertz. Now, there's also in brackets uh, internal and external options. And I believe those are referring to using an external uh, clock instead of using the AT Tiny's built-in one. Do not select these options unless you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you might end up with an AT Tiny that might be difficult to uh, get working again without actually having a separate crystal. So uh, again, I'm gonna leave this at eight megahertz. Uh, most of these other options you should be able to leave alone unless you know what you're doing. And then finally we have the port. So the port, make sure your Arduino selected. And then for the programmer, because I'm using the library that I previously showed you with all of these special AT Tiny cores, uh, we now see that there's some extra programmer options here. And the programmer that you want is Arduino as ISP, but what seems to work really well is the AT Tiny Core version. So look for AT Tiny Core in brackets here. And once you're sure you've got all of these options selected correctly, and once you've triple checked that everything is plugged in into the chip correctly, hopefully you already did this, but this is your final chance, click Burn Bootloader and hopefully everything works and in our case it did mostly because i've already spent half an hour troubleshooting and realizing all the things that i plugged in wrong so don't feel too bad if this doesn't work on your first try um, there's nothing wrong with you uh, that's just you know electronics and programming now one of the common errors you might hear you might see here is something about avr dude uh, seeing the device ID as basically being a bunch of zeros. That probably almost certainly means something is plugged in incorrectly. I got to see that error a lot. So once we've burned our bootloader, what we've done is we've configured the fuses inside the AT Tiny to use the options that we selected, such as the clock speed. Now we're ready to upload programs to it. So what I've done here is I've created a custom version of the Blink program. Uh, this is the same program that comes as an example uh, under basics blink. Uh, but all I've done is I've changed the pin number 
of the LED. In my case, I decided to change it to zero. So I defined my own LED, blink LED. I changed it to zero. Um, and I changed all of these pin mode and digital rights to also be uh, blink LED. And I can go ahead and post that sketch as well, but it's a very easy one to replicate. Now, this is gonna go to pin zero as Arduino defines it. So what the heck does that mean? Well, I had the same question. And this is once again, where sources are so important and reading documentation is so important because that previous website I showed you where I downloaded those ATtiny cores already has all of that mapped out. And it's not really intuitive, so it's important to look it up. So for example, I'm using the ATtiny84. So pin zero is the stuff in blue, right? That's the Arduino's pin. So pin zero and apparently pin 10 map over to what's actually pin two on the ATtiny, also known as PB01. So now we're gonna go ahead and see if this program actually uploads. So here I am and I'm gonna click upload. This is the moment of truth, guys. Let's see if all of this hard work paid off. Oh, and seems to have done something. Uh, one more thing that I enabled that I think was useful is you go to file, preferences, you have the option to show verbose output during upload. Uh, and it's suggested that you up enable that, so I did. And that gave me a ton of information. And I mean, it seems to have all worked. Uh, it claims that it actually did uh, everything it was trying to do. So now there's nothing else left but to actually test it. Okay, so I have everything wired up to test our LED blink example. It's quite simple. I've got our little capacitor here, again, across ground and voltage, uh, just to make sure that we're getting smooth power. I've got a resistor coming off uh, the pin right beside ground. Now, actually, it turns out that I was reading the diagram that I was showing you wrong, and I was looking at a different version of the AT Tiny. So it's pin 13, this one here, that I programmed uh, to be controlled. So pin zero in Arduino is pin 13 on ATtiny 84A. So that's got a resistor going over to an LED and then going back to ground. And it's that simple, so let's see if it worked. Oh, and sure enough, we have a blinking LED. How cool is that? And it is so much smaller than a full-blown even Arduino Nano, right? Like, check that out. Now, of course, uh, this is still a pretty big chip because it's a through-hole component. If you go SMD, then they go smaller. And of course, ATtiny85 is even smaller. So, I hope all of this helps. If you have success with this, if you have questions, if you think I made a mistake, please comment down below. And if you're looking for any of the components that I showed today, whether it's that cheaper Arduino Uno clone, whether it's these cool little small breadboards or all of the electronic components, I do have Amazon affiliate links down below. They do help the channel. And otherwise, good luck with your project. This has been so cool. And see you in the next video.